Well, the Alcan Rio Tinto deal would be the largest foreign takeover in Canadian history. The Alcan sale is the latest in a string of Canadian acquisitions by foreign companies. Some economists say it's all just part of intense global consolidations, especially in the mining industry. But others worry about the so-called hollowing out of Canadian head offices. For more on this, Tom Vassils joins us from Toronto. He's a business professor at the University of Toronto's Rotman School of Management. Tom, thanks for joining us. Thanks, David. Look, I know you've got your own strong opinions on this, but let's let's pursue the argument for a moment. When they're talking about the hollowing out of the corporate sector, what are they talking about? What's, what, what are the fears that, that, that people are, are speaking of? I think the fear is that these foreign companies take over Canadian companies and, uh, you know, fire Canadian employees, bring their own employees in, and uh, there's a loss of control to Canadians now. The foreign company owns it. So in the past, uh, you know, you've seen things like the Brazilians take over Inco and uh, the Swiss taking over Falcon Bridge and, you know, Americans taking over the Bay. And, and each time one of these things happens, there's this cry of the hollowing out and, and concern about what does that mean for the future of Canada. And so that's, that's really one side of the argument. And adding to that tone, there's a bit of flag waving that goes on too. The fact is that uh, Canadians don't, really, at some visceral level, don't like the idea of people in another country making decisions about our basic resources, you know, trees, water, minerals, those things. That's right. It's very emotional. And the other side of the argument is that there could be national security reasons why we don't want uh, certain sectors like oil and gas being bought out, uh, certain reasons we don't want certain cultural sectors being bought out like broadcasting. but. Uh, the Canada, the, the Investment Canada Act actually has some very strict limits on mm -hmm. on what that foreign ownership can be. So, for example, 47% in broadcast and and telecom, for example. But in other areas where in banking it was 25%, those have been eliminated, and now foreign owners ownership can be 100% of Canadian banks. So, mm -hmm. I think the real trend is going the opposite direction, allowing more foreign foreign ownership rather than less. All right. Now that we've inflated that balloon of concerns, help pop it. What's the other side of this argument? Well, the other side is really the reason why these buyouts happen is because there's economies of scale to be achieved by companies buying each other out and consolidating operations. If we are very efficient and effective in our Canadian operations, in fact, we shouldn't see a shrinking of that. We should see those companies grow to be successful, more profitable, more employees, driving more revenues, profits and taxes to the Canadian government. So I think there's a strong argument why we want these companies to be as efficient and effective as possible. Let's look at who wins in this, because as I see it, shareholders win, generally speaking. They usually do fairly well. Um, company executives always seem to do quite well. All those bankers who are, who are working on these deals, well, it's feeding day for them. They often do extremely well. But what's in it for, sure. for the rest of us? Let's put it that way. Right. So, well, a number of things. First of all, with the Alcan deal, as far as the investors go, that's a $38 billion cash deal, which is much more than the $29 billion hostile takeover uh, that Alcoa offered. And so competition is good. It, it increases the price of those uh, people that have investments uh, in Alcan. Uh, from a standpoint of the average Canadian out there, many of us already own shares in these companies through various mutual funds and pension plans and things like that. But given that we're in a free market here, anyone can go out there tomorrow and buy shares in any of these companies with $1,000, $10,000, a million dollars, whatever, and take your share of the pie, if you will, depending on what, what you want to invest in those companies based on what you think they're going to do in the future. All right. Do you think we're going to see more of these in the near future, Tom? I think we will, but really the, the best thing to say is the opposite side of the story. Let's forget about our own little sandbox and who's taking over all companies, our companies. we got great success stories of Canadians, you know, making major investments outside of Canada. Scotiabank uh, has bought uh, Banco Vera and mm -hmm. uh, Sud America Bank to, to form the third largest bank in Peru. Uh, Manulife has bought out, uh, you know, uh, Daihaiku and others uh, in Japan to, to increase their market capitalization to be the second largest life insurance company in all of North America. So the opposite goes as well. We have strong Canadian companies that are making investments around the world as we speak. Just to punctuate that, here are the numbers. 500 foreign companies, oh, sorry, Canadian companies bought 500 foreign companies worth $111 billion last year. Foreigners bought 175 Canadian firms worth $84 billion. So if you're looking at the ledger, we're still on the right side, I guess. Tom, Absolutely. I'd love to talk about this more, and I'm sure we will again, because I don't think we've heard the end of this. But thanks so much for sharing your expertise with us today. I appreciate it. Thanks, David. Bye now.